All right, the next area on the list is uh, technology plan. And as you recall, we uh, completed uh, and, and we received approval on the technology plan in uh, October. And uh, at that time, you noted that uh, the plan lacked some clarity and vision, and I uh, agreed with you on that. Uh, our focus was at the time to meet the 90-some uh, elements uh, uh, within the plan. Um, but just as we need to focus on that, uh, we also need to uh, develop a, a focus set of strategies that we as a district can emphasize. And I recall as we were working on the district strategic plan, we had this large list of things, and our goal was to get it down to a one-page uh, document. I'm hoping to get it down to a two-page document to, to help our, our technology plan. And I've, I've taken the uh, technology plan and kind of put it in that same format and aligned it with the uh, district strategic plan goal. And uh, we have five goals within our, uh, our tech plan. And... Uh, so the first plan, uh, the first goal talks about the uh, 21st century curriculum, and I've highlighted just what I feel are some of those key uh, uh, strategies, uh, making effective use of the new technologies, uh, expanding student-centric instruction, that's what uh, that's a term that Christensen uses. Uh, the impact model is a model uh, that is nationally recognized that really helps us maximize our technology and media specialists in the schools and in teaching uh, the computer and information literacy skills, and of course, uh, uh, our uh, use of online learning applications. So that's the, the 21st century goal. Uh, the, the next one I, uh, I, I call tools and training. Uh, it's access to the tools and, uh, most importantly, uh, technology staff development. Um, and that's the focus of that goal. Number three uh, is kind of a hodgepodge um, dealing with the health, safety, and responsible computing. Uh, we're looking at uh, using technology to enhance the safety and security of our students and our schools. And also, <coughs> because this is such a new area, there's a lot of um, things emerging, such as the social networking aspect of the technology that you talked about as a board uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's policies that we need to review uh, dealing with global, ethical, and responsible computing in our schools. Uh, goals four and five deal with leadership, equipment, staffing, and strategic planning. Uh, we need to have an open and collaborative uh, model for our technology planning, and that involves our school MTACs and our district technology advisory committee. And uh, goal five down there uh, really hits on some of the things in our strategic plan, equipping and refreshing schools with technology, increasing staffing, uh, maintaining the infrastructure, uh, looking at funding sources. And a new one that I added for us to look at during the next few months is uh, developing this transition plan uh, toward cloud computing and Web 2.0 uh, solutions. So our plan for the technology plan is to uh, work with our committees in March through May and review the, uh, the goals, alignment uh, of the strategic plan, uh, rework those uh, implementation strategies and outcomes, uh, create the updated vision and the uh, one to two page summary, and then bring that back to you in the November, uh, December time frame. And the, real, I, the reason I use that November, uh, December time frame is I'm really hoping that we could have a director of instructional technology uh, position filled at that point. And I, I would like that person to have their uh, at least fingerprints on this plan as we move forward because it will kind of set the, uh, set the stage. All right, looking at some of the, uh, the key indicators that uh, I provided to you in the, your packet there, um, Attachment 8 uh, provides you with a list of the top technology needs in our schools. Uh, in preparation for our District uh, Technology uh, Advisory Committee meeting, in December, I asked all the schools, MTACs, to meet, and uh, I didn't provide them with a whole lot of guidance. I, I really wanted it to be a focus group. Tell us what your most important needs are. And they, they fell into three areas, support, access, and infrastructure. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, many of the schools uh, feel that they need more technician support um, or, or a technician assistance support. Uh, our technology specialists are also challenged in their schools for uh, staff development time. And this is the term they use, dedicated staff development time. Uh, it's, it's very challenging to find uh, time with the faculty in small groups or large, large groups to have, have that staff development time. Access involves a number of things that you've seen before, the teacher laptops, student laptops, uh, smart boards, projectors, uh, online subscriptions. Uh, the infrastructure, the one thing that uh, I like to talk about, we'll talk about wireless in just a second, is the new telephone systems. You, you may have heard from some of your schools that there are some frustrations with our aging telephone systems. Uh, many of the systems that are in our schools that have not been replaced at this point are in the uh, 11 and 12 year old range. 
there are no parts for servicing when they go down. Uh, they, they just need to be uh, replaced, and we do have a proposal in, uh, and we're working on a, uh, a, a the potential for a, a proposal for a lease, a long-term lease to uh, replace all the all the phone systems in our schools. Uh, also for that uh, December meeting, I asked the schools about their teacher laptop program. As you know, the, the board funded a, uh, a teacher laptop program in the high schools with East and Chapel Hill, Carborough uh, already having the, the teacher laptops. Um, and uh, it was surprising that I, I, I learned that several of our schools have somehow figured out a way to make this happen. Um, now, they've used all types of different funding sources from you know, Title I to dual language, uh, reallocating computers in the schools, uh, the schools believe that a teacher laptop is the basic tool that every teacher needs. And uh, I believe that this is something that we need to move forward as a district uh, to empower our teachers to, to teach uh, in, a, in a digital format. Uh, the computer inventory is, uh, uh, we pull this from our, uh, our, our database. I have to uh, let you know that I, I put about a 90% degree of accuracy on this. Uh, no one likes to do inventory. Uh, our, our database is not 100% perfect. This just kind of gives you a, a, a snapshot of, of, of about where we are in, in most of our schools. Um, and as you can see, uh, there's a great variation between these schools based on what schools have, uh, have invested in. Um, and we can certainly talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, interactive whiteboards, as you remember, last year at this time, that was the, the hot topic. And a number of schools were very interested in moving in this direction. And uh, several of the schools utilized some of the fund balance uh, from last year for this, uh, uh, this tool in the classrooms. Uh, others, again, used all types of uh, creative financing to, uh, to find a way to do this. And I think when we, when we went to that, uh, that conference uh, last year in Greensboro, we may have had 19 or 20 smart boards throughout the district. Look at the bottom figure there. We're, we're up to 158 smart boards across the district and 491 uh, projectors uh, in, our, uh, in our classroom. So we're, we're, uh, we're moving forward in that area. Wireless, I know, has been an, an issue brought up in a number of SIT meetings. And, uh, uh, from our perspective, the district perspective, there are four buildings that have a pervasive and secure wireless uh, network. And those are our three high schools and Morris Grove. I would like you to, to know that we do have plans to move forward in all of our middle schools with uh, the hope that they will open in um, uh, August with a, uh, a pervasive and secure wireless network in them. Uh, so we are, we are planning to move forward with that. So then that leaves our elementary schools, and we are still kind of looking at, uh, at those and, and needing to get a little bit more data on, number one, we don't have the funding to do it at this point, but there are some elementaries that say, hey, we're, we're fine, you know, our, our network's fine, we, we may need a few more access points here and there, um, and we do need to go in and help them with the security aspect of that. Uh, there are others that, that have many uh, fewer access points, and they're going to need, need some more help, but uh, uh, we need to balance that with the number of mobile labs and a teacher laptop program. If we move toward teacher laptop program at the elementary school, we would certainly want to move forward with a, with a pervasive and secure wireless network. So, uh, uh, and I provided you with some of those costs on this, uh, on this page. The area of, uh, of staffing, um, uh, just like to point out, we've uh, been working on a revenue neutral reorganization plan during the last uh, couple of years, and we've created a new uh, central group here uh, no new people, just uh, reorganizing. And that group's uh, focused on customer support. Uh, there was uh, kind of a gap between our operations, our infrastructure, and the instructional side. This group in the middle is really to, to, to fill that gap and ensure that we're really paying attention to our customers, which are our teachers and students in the schools. Uh, and uh, in uh, September, we hired Dave Extra. Want to wave Dave? Dave's a new hire and uh, came in from. Uh, uh, the corporate world, and uh, we're really happy to, to have him here. One of the aspects I would like you to just notice, uh, we've talked about it several times here, is we do have a vacancy in our uh, Director of uh, IT, Instructional Technology and Media, and it's uh, just a really critical position uh, that uh, we, we hope to fill soon. Uh, it, it impacts so many of our, uh, of our projects. 